This is the third video in a series about JavaScript events. In the previous video, we covered how to toggle showing and hiding a div. I mean, the same thing would work for showing, hiding any kind of element on a web page. But what if you wanted to hide and show a lot of things? Would you have to write separate event listeners and separate functions for each one of these? No. So there's a method called for each, and we're going to explore that in this video and show you how to use it. Now, we could demonstrate this uh, group of things using several buttons and several divs, but instead of that, I'm going to use a definition list. And since you might not be familiar with that, this is the normal structure of a definition list. Now, it was designed to hold terms and definitions sort of like a glossary, but it's also a really good element to use if you're making an FAQ, frequently answered questions, because you can use the DT element for the question and the DD element for the answer. And that's what we're gonna use here. So I've made a simple FAQ, FAQ, with uh, three questions and answers about Canada. So the first thing we're going to want to do is hide all the answers because our goal here is to have an answer appear when you click the question. And if you click the question again, then the answer will be hidden again. And we want the same thing to happen for all questions and all answers. So here's how it will work when it's finished. And I've got all the code in here, and uh, soon I'm going to delete that and we'll start from scratch. But the way it works is like this. And if we click any question again, it will hide the answer, show the answer, hide the answer, show the answer, hide the answer. So we can show them all and have them all showing up. We can go back and we can hide anyone we want. So that is the end goal of the code that we're about to write. So right now, we're going to delete all that code. So at the start, first things first, we want to hide all the answers. So the answers are in the DD elements, okay? So this is the code that we're going to use to do that. And note, that previously we only had to select one element, like one div or one button. And so we used query selector without ALL on the end. We use this. That does not work when you need to select multiple elements of the same kind. So this different method, query selector all, will select all of that kind. So in this case, every element that is a DD in our HTML. And we've got one of those, two of those, three of those, because we have three answers. And I am going to, after I designate all of the DD elements, I am going to assign them to this variable answers, because that's what they are. They're their answers, right? So because we used query selector all to designate all of the DD elements. We can't just say hide. Now we can't just uh, set the style property for all of them at once uh, as we did before for one element. We have to use this method for each, okay? So I'm going to paste this in here and I'm gonna go over this bit by bit, but we also need to use a function with for each. So basically what happened when we said query selector all, we didn't make just one item that's in our variable. We made what's called a node list. And so it's kind of like a JavaScript array. It's practically the same. And for each, in a sense, is creating a loop so that we can go over each one of the DDs, no matter how many there are, and we can do the same thing to each one. So since we assigned all the DDs as a node list to this variable answers, 
we start with that variable, then we add the method for each, and then we add a function. And this time I'm going to use the kind of function definition that uses the word function, because I just think it's clearer when we're using for each. And then we need to have a, a parameter, a function argument in these parentheses. And it's very common when you're looking up things on Stack Overflow or any kind of thing that you would Google for help uh, to see the variable, the parameter L, E, L used because it stands for element. Okay, so we have to give some kind of variable in there. It wouldn't have to be L, but that's common, it's short. And what it means is, it's, it's what for each is acting on. So it means each individual item, whatever it is, inside answers. So if we have a list of DDs in there, then L means one DD, each DD. And that is why when we come down here to change the display property in CSS for the element to none, which makes it invisible, right, hides it, we use that same parameter again, L, because that's what makes this happen. Display changes to none for each DD. If this L and this L did not match, then this code would not work. So right now it's ready to go, and when I run it, it is going to hide all the answers. So answers are hidden, and clicking them doesn't do anything yet, right? Without this, I'll just take it away for a moment and show you what it would look like without that. Uh, I run it and all the answers are here, right? That's what happens by default, but we put this code in and it will hide all the answers. So that might seem like it was a lot of code just to hide the answers, but we can use very similar code to make an on-click event work for each of the questions, okay? so. Um, in order to make the questions be clickable and to have JavaScript listen for a click on each answer, we're going to have to designate those answers, right? So we can, I'm sorry, the questions. So we can copy this that we already have, and instead of the DDs, we will designate or collect the DT elements, right? And instead of naming it the same thing, these are the questions, right? So if you look in the HTML above, the DTs are questions and the DDs are answers. So that's what we've got here. So we want similar code to this to listen for a click on the question and then show the answer if the answer is hidden or hide the answer if the answer is not hidden. That's our aim. And that's pretty similar to what we did in a previous video. So I'm going to copy this for the answers. And below, I'm going to make it work for the questions. But of course, it's not that we want the same element to be hidden, right? We can keep EL in the parentheses it's local to the function. The scope of this parameter is inside the function, so it doesn't matter that we used L here and L here. But this line is not what we want to happen. We don't want to hide the questions. We want them to be clickable. So I will delete that because we need to put different instructions into this function because we want the questions to do something different. Now, in the previous video, we created a toggle, just like the one we're going to create here. But there, we had a button that was clicked and a div that would show and hide. I'm going to use that exact same code, and you should look at the previous video to understand that code if you don't understand. Okay, so it won't quite work for what we're doing here. Let me move this up a little bit. 
because here we don't have a button that's going to be clicked. What do we have that's going to be clicked? Well, we have a DT element that's going to be clicked, but we're not using DT within this function because this function has to use for each. So we replace the button that was the thing to be clicked in the previous video with the parameter for this function. So we're saying out of the questions, look at each one. And for each one of the things in question, put this on click listener onto that thing, onto that question, onto that DT element, okay? And then these, well, what are these? They're not going to be divs, right? They're going to be the DD. But we can't hide and show all the DDs. So how do we determine? How do we figure out? How do we tell JavaScript, I want you to show and hide the DD that comes immediately after the DT element? JavaScript has a way to do that. It's called next sibling. Cool. In order to work with the next sibling, we're going to again use the L, meaning the question, meaning the DT element. And then we say, get me the next sibling of that thing, whatever it is. So uh, this is actually not going to work exactly the way I'm writing it, but I'm going to show it to you because you will have this error many times. And this way, maybe you'll remember what you need to do to fix the error. So in theory, logically, next sibling in the HTML we've got here, right? Uh, this is an element and the very next element, not inside it, but just next adjacent is this DD. And so that is its next sibling in terms of the HTML and in terms of logic in human brains, okay? But there's a little bit of a problem because there's actually space, space between the end of the DT and the beginning of the DD. And I'm gonna show how we have to deal with that in just a moment. But this code that we've got, it is almost right. And let me hit tidy in uh, JS fiddle. There we go. So I've got if the next sibling of the element that we're talking about, the current one, uh, is none, right? If it's not visible, then make it visible. Change its display property to block. Else, if it is visible, if this is not true, right, then make it invisible. Hide it, right? So if it's hidden, show it. Otherwise, hide it. But let's run this. Okay, great. Click, click, click. Nothing's happening. This is because of that space I pointed out a moment ago. So even though logic would tell us that the next sibling of the DT is the DD right after it, not so. Uh, the white space following it is actually considered a sibling in the way the browser renders the DOM, the document object model. So yeah, I know, like, ah, but two next siblings account for this space, which is considered a sibling in the mind of the browser, and the real next sibling, which is this, which is what we want. So again, this is a common, common thing. You think you know what the next sibling is, but actually it's doubled. So you write L next sibling for each of the times that you want something to be evaluated or you want something to happen and you run it. And now whatever I click, hide, show, hide, show, hide, show, hide, show, hide, 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 show, show, show. Totally working now. It works if you do it this way, and this is usually the way it has to be done with a double next sibling. 
And then finally, if we want this to look more like a normal FAQ, frequently asked questions, uh, we could put on some styling and have, uh, you know, have the questions look more like questions and answers look more styled, more like something you might really see uh, on a real website. And that code is here. And of course, you can go to JS Fiddle and see it for yourself by following the link on the closing screen right here.